Hello, my name is Jenna Boone, and I will be discussing Woman Hollering Creek by Sandra Cisneros. Some background on the story, Woman Hollering Creek was written by Sandra Cisneros, a Mexican-American author, poet, teacher, and counselor. The story was published with a collection of short stories entitled Woman Hollering Creek and Other Stories, published in 1991. The collection as a whole focuses on Hispanic women, their relationships to society, heritage, men, and other women. A brief synopsis of the story. Our protagonist is a young Mexican woman named Cleophilus. Cleophilus marries a man named Juan Pedro and leaves behind her family and home in Mexico to live in Texas with her new husband. While married, Cleophilus has their first son, Juan Pedrito, and becomes pregnant with their second child as well. Throughout the story, the narrator reveals that Juan Pedro is cruel and abusive to Cleophilus. And it is not until she begs her husband to allow her to visit a doctor in her, during her second pregnancy that she is finally able to escape. The story takes place in a small town called Seguin, Texas. This is a town right on the Texas-Mexico border near a creek named La Gritona, which translates to Woman Hollering Creek. As a reminder, this presentation is meant to help you work toward your English 102 signature assignment. So I wanted to bring up our prompt here in the middle of this presentation before I go any further. The prompt for the paper asks you to identify a tradition, cultural assumption, socioeconomic circumstance, or belief system that shapes a character's experience or identity. From this point on, I'm going to present to you a few themes and key passages that will hopefully help you respond to this prompt. One essential theme that is constantly repeated throughout the story is the idea of expectation versus reality. Cleophilus is constantly juxtaposing her expectations of what life and love should be with the harsh realities of her abusive marriage and isolated existence. Another theme is the idea of alienation. Cleophilus is completely dependent upon her husband. She cannot drive, she doesn't have any friends, she has no family in the area, and she is completely at the mercy of her husband to do anything. She is cut off from the world and unable to make any of her own decisions. And the final theme is the idea of strength and community of women. Throughout the story, Cleophilus has virtually no communication or contact with other women. But at the end, when she finally visits the doctor, doctor's office and meets Felice, or meets Graciela, the midwife, who then puts her in touch with Felice, who helps her escape, is Cleophilus empowered to make her own decisions and take agency over her life. These women, Graciela and Felice, are both career women with independence, they have their own vehicles, and they again empower Cleophilus to seek the same in her life. A few key passages to look at. The first one comes early in the paper, or in the story. It reads, what Cleophilus has been waiting for is passion, passion in its purest crystalline essence, the kind of books, the kind of books and songs and telenovelas describe when one finds finally the great love of one's life and does whatever one can, must do at whatever the cost. This passage appears at the beginning of the story and the narrator sort of lays out Cleophilus's expectations for readers. It shows us what she thinks that wifehood and motherhood should be as they are portrayed through the media. She has books and songs and telenovelas that are telling her what her life should be and what she should expect from life, when in reality, what she gets is very different. The next passage appears a little later in the story. It reads, from the time during her first year when still a newlywed, she is invited and accompanies her husband, sits mute beside their conversation, waits and sips beer until it grows warm, nods her head, smiles, yawns, politely grins, laughs at appropriate moments, leans against her husband's sleeve. From this, Cleophilus concludes, each is nightly trying to find truth lying at the bottom of the bottle. In this scene, Cleophilus is accompanying or remembering a time when she accompanied her husband to Ice House, which is a bar where he drinks with his friends. In this scene, she's explaining that she comes to the realization that her role is to sit silently and simply be present for her husband to show off to his friends or whatever he chooses to do. The next passage comes toward the end of the story. It reads, was Cleophilus just exaggerating, as her husband always said? It seemed the newspapers were full of such stories. This woman found on the side of the interstate, this one pushed from a moving car, this one's cadaver, this one unconscious, this one beaten blue. Her ex-husband, her husband, her lover, her father, 
her brother, her uncle, her friend, her co-worker. This is undoubtedly one of the darkest passages in the story, and it comes immediately after Cleophilus expresses discomfort at a conversation that Juan Pedro has with one of his friends. This friend has murdered his wife and is basically making a joke out of it in conversation with Juan Pedro. And at this point, it seems that Cleophilus is really realizing how dire her situation is. She is realizing that women around her are not safe and that she is not safe if she stays in the situation that she's in. The final passage is right at the end of the story, and it reads, But when they drove across the creek, the driver opened her mouth and let out a yell as loud as any mariachi. Did you ever notice, Felice continued, how nothing around here is ever named after a woman? At this point, Cleophilus has finally escaped her marriage with her son, and they are in the truck with Felice, and they are crossing the woman hollering creek and finally escaping and looking for the opportunity to start a new life. Throughout the story, the creek, La Gritona, is constantly referred to in more of a negative connotation, this idea of a woman screaming or a woman hollering. And here we see Felice, who is sort of taking or reclaiming that name as her own. She's a woman who is helping another woman seek freedom, driving in her own pickup truck, doing whatever she wants to do, and sort of making light of this name by letting out a triumphant yell as she crosses the bridge or the river. Finally, here are a couple of citations for you if you're interested in learning more about Sandra Cisneros or any of the information in this presentation. I hope you find this helpful.